So everybody got buffed. Every single person from this crossover has been buffed. Which means we gotta do all these showcases again. So when I started off with the man Grey. Well, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that Grey has been shown off quite a bit. Literally, if I'm making any kind of video and I'm talking about something random, more than likely there is a Grey and Draken team in the background nuking whatever boss I'm fighting. But I haven't talked about him in a very long time and I've learned a few things about him that's made me appreciate him a little bit more. We have a freeze resist passive and we have a water resist passive. They're okay, decent, right? The main passive you're looking out for though is his ice wizard passive. This is what makes Gray so potent as a luck unit and just as a unit in general. This thing gives him arc age up based on the amount of luck he has when battle starts. Now when battle starts, for some of you that may not know, is Every time you enter a quest, that is considered battle start, but every time you enter a new stage, that is also considered battle start. As for his kit, it's pretty solid. Just mainly a damage dealing kit though. His skill increases accuracy. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't even know it did that. His art is able to buff up everyone's physical damage by 30%, and it can stack all the way up to 150%. By the way, this physical damage is permanent. You see, it has no duration because once you apply this, this thing is on the entire team until you either complete the quest or or everyone dies. And as for the true art, you got a 50,000% modifier here. You're able to increase your own damage by 100% for 20 seconds, and you buff up everybody's art gauge by 70. Before, I think this was 50. Extra 20 art gauge on top of it. Very good. This is actually a really good utility true art as well. I didn't really talk about it yesterday in the Should You Summon, but you could use Grace true art. It's pretty much like another type zero. That's literally what it is. It's like a free type zero. In terms of his equip slots, they're all physical, as you see. Five star physicals and a four star physical. And what you're going to be rocking here is, uh, really up to you. Since he gives himself so much art gauge per stage, he doesn't really need too much art shin, but if you want to give him an art shin equip, going ahead, stuff like Chua's Nagi is never bad. In terms of damage buffing equips though, there's a lot of options here. If you're using mostly a water damage team, True Saint Blaze is really good. Another thing to mention too is that the new equip that came from the Mizuki event, the five star physical, very good. If you don't want to use that, you could also use something like True Drago to give some physical res down, or you could also use Cold Excalibur. That's actually currently here in the fairy tale collab and that gives you a 30 percent physical and 30 percent water resist down on the enemy which of course gray benefits from both and yeah pretty much anything that's gonna be buffing up his damage or attack is gonna be great for him and then as for the four star physical it's the same thing anything that's gonna be buffing up his attack or damage me myself i personally really like evil death on him but that is from the dark z org event and i don't know how many people is actually gonna have that either way just make sure you got stuff that makes him hit harder in terms of the crest on him you see we got the double four plus you no know, slight little flex little flex for the first one i would say highly prioritize attack up attack up's just great on him just increases his raw damage by a ton if you don't want to go with attack up you can also go something like promise of funeral god very good on him too as for the second crest i would say mainly player xp up is very good since he's mainly a farmer unit and he's going to be used in most general content in the game you probably do want those extra drops and you're going to be you know using them for the luck bonus and all that so player xp up just makes it to where he's kind of more of that farmer type of role and you're able to get some extra xp while you play and farm the game. If you don't want to go with player XP up, you could just go with another damage crest here and be perfectly fine as well. Now, in terms of his animations, we've seen them plenty of times on this channel by now. But just in case, if anybody's new here and you wanted to see Gray's animations, let's go through them. So he has his attack skill here, just a little blast. We have his skill, which I like to call Arma Helma. And then we have his art, which is two ice swords and a slash. I really like this art a lot. I think I like this art more than the true art, to be honest. I don't know, something about it just feels very nice. It's just really cool whenever you see Gray do this. He does a lot of damage with it as well. And it's very quick too. This is actually what you're gonna be stacking if you wanna get like that physical damage buff online for everybody. And yeah, it's great, really good art. And then for the true art, very quick true art here. We have two swings of the sword and then a slice and then that's it. That's the end of the true art, just like that. It is kind of weird though that he does put up like this icicle, but he can't actually freeze the enemy. It would be kind of cool if he had like freeze in his kit since he is, you know, an ice wizard, but it is what it is. You guys have seen this team countless amounts of times on the channel. I don't know if I would necessarily call this the best team for Grey, but you don't really have to build a team around Grey. That's the great thing about it. You can kind of just do whatever you want. Like, if you wanted to just put him on a team and everybody else kind of worked with each other, but Grey was just kind of there, he wouldn't mind. He really does not care. Mainly, the idea with this team is that since Grey's animation is so fast, and since he's going to have his true art first, um, everyone else just kind of utilizes his art gauge and cleans up after Grey does, like, all of his damage. And as you see, if we go into, like, any kind of content in the game that is more of this like farmable type of content you know like events and stuff like that you're gonna see that it's not an issue at all for gray he's gonna be able to just instantly blow up 
anything in front of him because uh, that's just what he does. Even if you didn't have like this exact team, by the way, if you went with like more of a mono water team or you went with just whatever team you wanted to, you could run him alongside other nukers if you want to and have like two nukes at the same time going on, which I've seen people do that where they use a gray and then maybe they use a Simon and you're able to like really supply the team with a lot of art gauge just from a gray's true art alone. Like he's not there just to deal all the damage and Simon's there to kind of like clean up the damage. That makes sense. But as you see, 1.8 million from the boy gray and then everyone else kind of cleans up. But yeah, if we go into the secure thing, pretty much he's just a great character all around for any kind of farming stage. That's the main thing you need to know about gray. If you're farming something and you got this character, put him on the team. If you're not using gray, you're doing yourself a disservice. I'm telling you. Look at that. Boom. Everybody gets true arts and this boss dies. Also, is this the first time we've seen like the ice Ignis boss? I, I don't know if this is uh, the first time or if she's actually in the DOT. I don't think she's in DOT yet, but I actually like her design. She, she looks really cool. 3.3 million though from the boy Gray and yeah, good stuff, man. Good stuff all around here. I'm kind of curious. Let's see how much this team actually hits for in uh, the training battle real quick. The only bad part about this whenever I'm doing like damage tests is that I kind of really hate how Gray just goes before everybody because I want to see the damage from everyone but is this actually a kill? Oh, wow. Gray got his true art back again. That's crazy. Let's see the details. I'm going to say Gray probably dealt really like maybe 5 million, maybe 6 million uh, before that second true art went off. So this is probably what I would run if I'm rocking more of a sustain comp here. We got the Mako, the Haruto for some healing and damage buffs. We got the Vox for the crits, of course. And then we have the one and only Gray. In terms of his slots, his slots can be whatever you want it to be in sustain. This is what I was saying before. He doesn't really need the arch gen, but if you wanted to give him the art gauge on like at least one equip, it wouldn't be a bad option. Another thing to mention too, with the new AI system, you can actually utilize Gray's art in nukes as well if you wanted to but it's not needed for most content in the game i want to say so as you see here we're able to just instantly stack it boom it goes off we get the art gauge back we pop the art again and then look at this insta kill like it's nothing even if we didn't have the auto on for everybody's skills um and oh well okay well i gotta use that now even if we didn't have the auto on for everybody's skills gray's art would still probably one shot majority of these mobs because his art multiplier is twenty two thousand, so it's pretty solid it's in harder content he's not going to be able to one shot mobs like if you use his stuff in high level mines, he's going to be needing some type of crit buff or some type of damage buff to one shot the mobs with his art. Even with his stacking damage buff, it's not going to be enough. And oh my God, I hate this thing so much, especially whenever it detonates very quickly. And we already are maxed out as well in terms of the art too. So, hey, we are vibing right now. And we're going to go into this final fight. And as you see, Gray's going to have his true art for the finale too, even though he's been spamming it. So now we wait for everybody to go off and then we pop everything. Now let's see the damage from everybody right here. And dang! Oh, wait, she iframe. Bro! GS doesn't want anybody to have fun, but look at that. Just instantly, boss is dead. Like it's nothing. So yeah, there's not much else to say about Gray. He's an amazing farming character. Very good in multiplayer too. We didn't really talk about that, but really good as a multiplayer unit as well since he's so self-sufficient with his arc gauge. You can kind of just make like an AI set for him specifically for multiplayer and he can just play the game by himself and you can go do whatever else while you're farming multiplayer majority of the time. I'm um, really the only weakness that I see about Gray is the fact that he's not that great at end game like any type of end game fight he's not going to be the nuker that you're going to be turning to most of the time he can compete I will say that he is solid in those situations if you're needing to get through like a boss with millions of HP, it's probably better just to take someone like Simon at that point. But in general content, that's where he reigns supreme. Thank you all for coming out though. That's going to be it for this video. Tell me down below what you guys think about Gray. You guys liking him? Are you guys still not really feeling him? Or what's the deal? I know a lot of people out here be sleeping on the Gray, talking about he's trash, but best way to put it is he's an amazing quality of life unit. But hey, you guys already heard my thoughts, so I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comment section. Also, if you enjoyed this video, highly recommend check out either one of the videos popping on the screen right now. Great content, guarantee you love them. Oh, and one more thing, don't forget to drink water.